The 2021 Atlanta Braves finished the regular season with an 88 and 73 record. They finished the postseason as World Series champions. Obviously, this season ended spectacularly for the Braves and their fans, but had you asked them how they were feeling at the end of May, or the All-Star break, or even after the trade deadline, the honest fans would have told you that they thought they had no chance at making the postseason, much less winning the World Series. For the Braves, nearly everything that could have gone wrong did go wrong, ranging from a mountain of injuries, to player suspensions, to blown leads, and to missed calls. Despite all of this, they still found a way to climb the baseball mountain and win their first title since 1995. This video has been sponsored by Keeps. I've always considered myself to have great hair, and if I started to experience any kind of hair loss, I would want to take steps to address it immediately. And that's where Keeps comes in. Keeps is an online subscription service that offers treatment to combat the symptoms of hair loss. Two out of three guys will experience hair loss by the time they're 35, so if you're getting up with Charlie Morton age-wise, give Keeps a try. Their treatments are clinically proven to stop hair loss and improve growth. Whether you're trying to prevent hair loss or take better care of the hair you have right now, Keeps has you covered. Their shampoo and conditioner can help strengthen your hair and promote healthy growth. Keeps delivers what you need straight to your door, and with their subscription service and refill reminders, you'll never run low the products you need. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com exe or click the link in the description. That's k-e-e-p-s dot com slash e-x-e. The 2020 offseason was a pivotal one for the 2021 Braves. Atlanta signed veteran starter and proven postseason performer Charlie Morton, as well as picking up lefty Drew Smiley for the rotation. They re-signed outfielder Marcelo Zuna in February to conclude their main moves of the offseason. At a glance, Ozuna might have seemed like the main prize of the winter, but it would turn out to be Morton by the season's conclusion. The Braves also made smaller moves such as signing Pablo Sandoval, trading for Guillermo Heredia, and bringing in veteran Jesse Chavez for the bullpen. These moves would have an impact on the 2021 season in different ways for Atlanta, but the biggest question going into the season was who would play third base. The Braves showed that they were committed to Austin Riley by not making a deal for Nolan Arenado or Justin Turner, a move that would later pay off greatly for them. With the lack of seemingly big moves for the Braves, combined with the Phillies re-signing JT Realmuto and Didi Gregorius, and the Mets bringing in Francisco Lindor, Carlos Carrasco, James McCann, and a new ownership group, Pakoda projected Atlanta to finish fourth in the National League East with an 82-80 and record and a 5% chance at winning the division. The Mets were picked to run away with the division, with the Nationals, Phillies, and then the Braves trailing behind them. The NL East was regarded as one of the strongest divisions in the game, and for seemingly good reason heading into the start of the season. The Braves opened their season in Philadelphia, in which they were swept in three games, including a pair of late-inning losses. They then got the news that MLB had plans in place to move the All-Star Game from Atlanta to Denver in response to the new Georgia voting laws, a huge blow for the city and their businesses. Punches kept coming for the Braves in April, including another brutal loss to the Phillies in which Alec Bohm was called safe on a play at home in which he did not touch home plate, scoring the game-winning run. The Braves would go on to get swept by the Marlins in the next three games. Other ugly moments in April included a doubleheader against the Diamondbacks, in which Atlanta was one hit by Zach Gallen in the first game and no hit by Madison Bumgarner in the second. They were outscored 12 to nothing against one of the worst teams in the league. The bright spot in April for the Braves came in the form of Sean Kazmar Jr., who made his comeback to the league after being out of it for 12 years. The Braves finished April 12-14, fourth in the National League East. May did not start off much better for Atlanta, as they lost catcher Travis Darno with a thumb injury on a play at the plate in a series against the Blue Jays, in which they were swept in three games. With every bright spot, there seemed to be another punch in the gut. Young right-hander Huascar Yano was pitching well and hitting homers before he punched a dugout bench and broke his hand. Atlanta then received word that Mike Soroka suffered a setback in his Achilles recovery and needed another surgery. They lost Marcelo Zuno with a finger injury, and Jacob Webb hit Kevin Pillar in the face with a pitch. The bullpen was blowing games, and the starting pitching was battered and ineffective. The bright spots of May were Ronald Acuna Jr.'s walk-off home run, Pablo Sandoval's clutch blast, which led to the Braves winning an insane game against the Phillies, and the Braves lineup exploding for 20 runs against the Pirates. Miraculously, the Braves finished May at 25-26, and 26, second in the NL East and four games back of the Mets. Any optimism that the Braves had going into June quickly evaporated, as word came out that Marcelo Zuna had been arrested and charged with assault after a domestic violence incident at his home. He would not play for the Braves again in 2021. The Braves then received more terrible news, that Mike Soroka had suffered a complete 
re-tear of his Achilles tendon walking around the clubhouse and would not pitch again in 2021. June was more of the same for Atlanta. The bullpen kept blowing leads and team performance never came together as they failed to climb above 500. They finished at 38-41, third in the NL East and five games back of the first place Mets. July started off with the Marlins hitting Ronald Acuna Jr. again, but this would hardly be the worst injury he would suffer this month. The offense showed signs of life at times, as Atlanta scored 20 against the Mets and featured walk-offs such as Max Fried's walk-off single and a comeback win against Miami. Then July 10th came. The Braves were playing the Marlins in Miami, trying to reach the 500 mark on the season. Jazz Chisholm hit a ball to right field that Ronald Acuna Jr. could not make a leaping catch on. Chisholm scored on the play, but all eyes were on Acuna, who had torn his ACL on his landing and would not play again this season. In the eyes of many Braves fans and in the eyes of baseball, the Atlanta Braves 2021 season ended on July 10th after one play. Atlanta's biggest star, one of the faces of baseball, and an early favorite for the NL MVP was lost for the season. The Braves would enter the All-Star break at 44-45, and third in the NL East, and four and a half games back of the first place Mets. Loss number 45 came to the Marlins, in a game where Miami starter Pablo Lopez struck out nine consecutive Braves to start the game. Atlanta still had not gotten above 500 at any point in the season. To top it all off, Ian Anderson was placed on the injured list with shoulder inflammation. The Braves season was at its lowest point to date. Three Braves were named All-Stars in 2021, Ronald Acuna Jr., Freddie Freeman, and Ozzy Albies. Atlanta's GM Alex Anthopoulos sought to reinforce his group at the deadline and replace the production that they had lost. The first order of business was acquiring outfielder Jock Peterson from the Cubs on July 15th. The move came early and weeks before the deadline. It showed the baseball world that the Braves were not going quietly. Veteran catcher Steven Vogt was brought in from the Diamondbacks on July 17th to solidify the position, and then came the most impactful moves at the deadline. The first was to bring in Eddie Rosario from Cleveland in exchange for Pablo Sandoval. Former Brave Adam Duvall was reacquired from the Marlins, and finally, a struggling Jorge Soler was acquired from Kansas City. In one day, the Braves had an entirely new outfield and were no longer forced to play guys like Abraham Almonte, Guillermo Heredia, or Ire Adrianza, who had been holding down the outfield after numerous injuries to everyday players. The finishing touch of the deadline was bringing in reliever Richard Rodriguez from the Pirates, who was having a great season at the time. It's easy to look back at these moves now and see how great they were and how much of an impact they had, but at the time the postseason still seemed like a minuscule possibility for Atlanta. They finished July at 52-54, and third in the NL East. The Mountain was the 500 record mark, and the Braves have been struggling to climb above it for the entirety of the 2021 season. Six times the Braves had a 500 record during the season and failed to get above it. On August 6th, the Atlanta Braves climbed above the 500 mark for the first time in 2021. They were in third place in the National League East, trailing the first place Mets by one and a half games and the second place Phillies by one. They climbed the mountain on the backs of players like Max Fried, Austin Riley, Freddie Freeman, and their trade deadline acquisitions. Freed would go on to be one of the best pitchers in baseball in the second half, posting an 11-3 record and a 1.74 ERA in 14 starts. Austin Riley would turn himself into an MVP candidate, hitting 333 with 19 home runs and a 976 OPS in the second half. Freddie Freeman would continue to perform to his MVP status, hitting 332 with 12 home runs and a 927 OPS after the break. The Braves were starting to wake up, but there was still work to do if they were to make the postseason. The two wildcard spots in the National League were firmly in the hands of the Dodgers and at the time the Padres, who the Braves trailed by six and a half games for the second spot. The route to the playoffs was through the National League East, and the Braves had work to do if they were to defend their divisional crown. They would rise to the challenge in August, going 18-8. and eight. Paired with the collapse of the Mets and the ineptitude of the Phillies, they now led the NL East with a two-game lead. After not finishing a month over 500 for the entire season, Atlanta now stood at 70-62 and 62 at the end of August, eight games over 500, and now with a lead in the division. It took the entirety of September, but on the final day of the month, the Braves won the National League East for the fourth straight season. The division clincher was their sixth consecutive win, which included back-to-back three-game sweeps of the Padres and Phillies. 
The Braves did it without Marcelo Zuna, Mike Soroka, Ronald Acuna Jr., and with missing Travis Darno and Ian Anderson for long points of the season. Jorge Soler had a monster September, Max Fried continued to dominate and won NL Pitcher of the Month, Charlie Morton continued his great season, and Eddie Rosario hit for the cycle. The Braves finished the year 88-73, and winning the NL East by 6.5 games. They went 44-45 and up to the All-Star break, and 44-28 and after it. The core of Freeman, Riley, Freed, Dansby Swanson, and Ozzie Albies had led Atlanta the postseason, along with contributions from the offseason and deadline acquisitions in Charlie Morton, Adam Duvall, Jorge Soler, and Eddie Rosario. The bullpen bent but did not break, and the Braves were able to overcome the two teams that stood in front of them for most of the season in the Mets and Phillies. The Braves had made the postseason every year since 2018 through winning the NL East, but those three seasons were full of failure and heartbreak. In 2018, the Braves met the Dodgers in the NLDS and lost in four games. The following year, they lost the NLDS in five games to the Cardinals in a heartbreaking Game 5, in which the Cardinals put up 10 runs in the first inning, and the rest was history. And in 2020, the Braves made it through the wildcard round in the NLDS by beating the Reds and Marlins, and held a three games to one lead over the Dodgers heading into Game 5. They would proceed to lose the next three to Los Angeles and Arlington, including a heartbreaking Game 7 in which Cody Bellinger would hit a go-ahead home run in the 7th to put the Dodgers up for good. The Braves were heading home again after blowing a golden opportunity to make it to the World Series, but this year, things would be different. The Braves would match up against the Brewers in the National League Division Series, in a matchup that looked fairly even on paper with a slight edge given to the Brewers for their three-headed monster of a rotation, headlined by future 2021 Cy Young Award winner Corbin Burns and featuring Brandon Woodruff and Freddie Peralta. The question marks came in the form of Milwaukee's offense and the Braves pitching. Many chose the Brewers to take the series due to their top-heavy rotation, and the Braves lineup would have their work cut out for them. Game 1 was a pitcher's duel between Charlie Morton and Corbin Burns. Atlanta put runners on the corners with nobody out in the first, but failed to score, after Ozzie Albies grounded into a double play that resulted in Jorge Soler being thrown out at home. Despite failing to score, the Braves made Burns throw 40 pitches in the first two innings. He made it through six innings without allowing a run, striking out six. Morton had matched him on the other side, but things fell apart in the seventh. After hitting Avisael Garcia with the pitch, he allowed a two-run home run to Rowdy Telez that would prove to be the difference in Game 1. The Braves' lone run came on a Jock Peterson solo shot in the eighth, and they would drop the opener 2-1. to one. Max Fried took the mound in Game 2 and proceeded to throw six shutout innings against a struggling Milwaukee lineup. The Braves cashed in against Brandon Woodruff, as Freddie Freeman drove in Jorge Soler with a single, and Ozzie Albies followed that with an RBI double off the top of the wall. Austin Riley crushed a solo shot to right center to make it 3-0 Atlanta, as Max Free completed his six innings while striking out nine. Then came the bullpen, who after struggling through the regular season, dominated in the series. Luke Jackson and Tyler Matzik got the job done in the 7th and 8th with key strikeouts, and Will Smith saved the game in the ninth with his bend but do not break approach. The Braves had even the series as it headed back to Atlanta. As the series shifted back home for the Braves, they were quickly introduced to the holiday known as Jocktober. Ian Anderson was matched up against Freddie Peralta for Milwaukee, and the game was scoreless through four, thanks largely to a key double play turned by the Brewers to escape a jam in the second inning, in which Adam Duvall was thrown out at second before the runner tagging from third could score. The Braves would pull off key defensive plays to keep the game scoreless in the top half of the fifth, before a pinch hitter, Jock Peterson came up with two runners on and sent one to the right field seats for a three-run homer. The combination of Jesse Chavez, Tyler Matzik, Luke Jackson, and Will Smith followed Ian Anderson's five scoreless innings to take a 2-1 series lead with a 3-0 win in Game 3. The Braves would turn to Charlie Morton on three days rest in Game 4, who would find himself in trouble early but find his way out with a key strikeout of Rowdy Telez. After retiring nine straight, Morton found himself in trouble again in the fourth and gave up an RBI single to Omar Navarez. He would give way to the bullpen, who would give up a second hit to make it 2-0 Milwaukee. The Braves would tie the game in the bottom of the fourth, despite a foul pop-out in which Adam Duvall was called out, despite replay showing that the ball had touched the ground. The play was not reviewable, and Duvall was out. However, after loading the bases, pinch hitter Eddie Rosario delivered a two-run single to tie the game. Atlanta's deadline acquisitions were already paying off in the series. Rowdy Telez would put the Brewers back in front with a monster home run in the fifth to make it 4-2, but the Braves would respond in the bottom half, tying the game after a Jock Peterson fielder's choice and a Travis Darno single. The bullpen for Atlanta would keep things tied with huge performances by A.J. Minter, Luke Jackson, and Tyler Matzik. Then in the bottom of the eighth, Freddie Freeman stepped up against Josh Hader and untied the game with a clutch opposite field home run. Will Smith would take the mound in the ninth and put the finishing touches on the Braves' 5-4 win and 3-1 series win, sending them to the NLCS.
It was an NLCS rematch of the year previous, as Atlanta was set to take on the 106-win Los Angeles Dodgers, who had just knocked off the 107-win San Francisco Giants in the divisional round. Even with an ailing pitching staff, the Dodgers were considered the favorites over Atlanta in the series, especially with the previous year still in mind, in which Atlanta had blown a 3-1 series lead to LA. The Braves turned to Max Fried in Game 1 in Atlanta, while the Dodgers turned to opener Corey Knable, who the Braves got an early runoff of on a wild pitch. The Dodgers tied the game quickly and would take the lead in the fourth on a Will Smith home run. Austin Riley would tie the game for Atlanta with a solo shot down the line, and the Braves' bullpen would hold the tie into the ninth, aided greatly by Chris Taylor's massive base running mistake. In the bottom of the ninth, with the game tied at two, Ozzie Albies blooped a single and stole second. Austin Riley then sent everybody home with a hit down the line off of Blake Trinan, and the Braves managed to steal Game 1 at home. Game 2 proved to be a classic as well, as the Braves turned to Ian Anderson to oppose Max Scherzer. Anderson struggled early, giving up two runs, but it was still Jocktober in Atlanta, who after hitting a ball just foul to miss tying the game, didn't miss the second time and sent a two-run homer to the chop house to make it 2-2. The Dodgers would take the lead again on a double by Chris Taylor that Guillermo Heredia misplayed, making it 4-2 in the seventh, but the Braves were not out of comebacks. With the Dodgers turning to Julio Urias in relief for the eighth inning, Atlanta brought home two runs on hits by Ozzy Albies and Austin Riley, one that included a gutsy send from third base coach Ron Washington and a great slide from Eddie Rosario. Riley tied it with a double in the gap, tying the game and sending it to the ninth. Will Smith would bend but not break, as Trey Turner just missed a go-ahead home run in left field. In the bottom of the ninth, with Dansby Swanson on second, Eddie Rosario greeted Kenley Jansen with a sharp grounder up the middle that hit off of Corey Seager's glove and went into center field, winning game two for the Braves and putting them up 2-0 as the series was set to head back to LA. The Braves' bullpen had been a strong point in the postseason, but they would come up short in game three. Atlanta squandered a chance to score early thanks to base running miscues, and the Dodgers would take an early 2-0 lead against Charlie Morton. This would change in the fourth, when the Braves would bring across four runs against Walker Buehler, aided by a sun ball and a missed strike three call on Jock Peterson. Morton settled in, and the Braves added another run in the fifth to make it 5-2. The clock was ticking for the Dodgers, and in the eighth they put two runners on against Luke Jackson. On a 1-2 pitch to Cody Bellinger, on a fastball at his shoulders, Bellinger tied the game with a three-run home run to save the Dodgers season. Mookie Betts would give LA the lead, and they would hold on to win game three, 6-5. Game 4 would be a bullpen game for Atlanta, and Eddie Rosario would come alive. Atlanta would take an early lead with back-to-back -back home runs off of Julio Urias, one of which coming from Rosario, and offseason signees Jesse Chavez and Drew Smiley combined for four innings and just two runs out of the bullpen. Chris Martin, AJ Minter, Tyler Matzik, and Will Smith would see the rest of the game through with scoreless appearances, and Eddie Rosario launched his second homer of the game, a three-run shot that would be the dagger in a 9-2 Atlanta win putting them in the familiar position of a 3-1 series lead. Atlanta would send Max Fried out for Game 5, trying to close out an NL title. After Freddie Freeman homered in the first to make it 2-0, the Dodgers would score 11 unanswered, riding a 3-homer game from Chris Taylor and a 2-homer game from AJ Pollock. Fried had turned in his worst outing of the playoffs, and the series was headed back to Atlanta with the Braves leading 3-2. Atlanta had seen this movie before, and desperately needed to win one of the next two at home to avoid blowing a 3-1 NLCS lead for the second straight season. The series would head back to Atlanta for Game 6, where in front of an electric home crowd, the Braves would take an early lead off of Walker Buehler thanks to Austin Riley. Ian Anderson pitched three scoreless innings before giving up a game-tying single to Cody Bellinger in the fourth. In the bottom half, after a walk by Travis Darnot and a double by Adrianza, Eddie Rosario launched a series-winning three-run home run to right off of Walker Buehler. Atlanta's bullpen would take over as A.J. Minter would throw two scoreless innings with four strikeouts before turning it over to Luke Jackson, who would give up a run before giving way to Tyler Matzik with runners on second and third and nobody out. In what would arguably be the biggest pitching performance of the season for Atlanta, Matzik struck out Albert Pujols, Steven Souza Jr., and Mookie Betts to strand the tying runners in scoring position. The stage was set for Will Smith, who retired A.J. Pollock on a sharp ground ball to Georgia-born Dansby Swanson, who threw to longtime brave Freddie Freeman to seal the National League pennant, Atlanta's first since 1999. Trade deadline acquisition Eddie Rosario was the MVP of the series, as Atlanta's July moves continued to pay off in October, and they would continue to pay off in the World Series. Atlanta was set to take on the Houston Astros in the 117th World Series, opening up at Minute Maid Park in Houston. 
The Astros were searching for their first championship not tainted from a cheating scandal, and the Braves were looking for their first title since 1995 when they defeated the Cleveland Indians. Houston came in with the pitching staff running on fumes, now without Lance McCullers Jr. due to injury to go along with missing Justin Verlander and not having Zach Grinke at full strength. Atlanta was riding on the arms of Morton, Freed, and Anderson, making the pitching matchups for the series very interesting. Atlanta struck quickly in Game 1, as deadline acquisition and new leadoff man Jorge Soler, after missing the NLCS due to COVID, sent the third pitch of the game from Framber Valdez to the Crawford boxes for a leadoff home run. Austin Riley would later double in Ozzie Albies to make it 2-0 Atlanta in the first. Charlie Morton worked out of trouble early and would get a 3-0 lead as Atlanta would tack on another off of Valdez in the second. In the bottom half, Morton would be struck on the ankle by a comebacker, but would stay in the game after walking it off. Atlanta would make it 5-0 after a two-run home run by Adam Duvall, but Morton's health quickly became a concern. After being struck in the leg, Morton retired three batters with what was later diagnosed as a fractured fibula. He would be forced to exit after striking out Jose Altuve, and the Braves would be without their biggest postseason weapon for the remainder of the series. They turned to the bullpen, as Minter, Jackson, Matzik, and Smith combined to throw six and two-thirds innings to close out Game 1, which Atlanta would win 6-2. After losing Morton, Atlanta needed Max Free to dominate in Game 2. He would struggle for the second consecutive start after soft contact and an Eddie Rosario throwing error opened the door for Houston to bring home four runs in the second inning. Astros starter Jose Urquidy would quiet the Atlanta bats with five strong innings, and Houston would even the series with a 7-2 win. The series shifted back to Atlanta, and Ian Anderson would look to give the Braves a series lead. He would proceed to throw five no-hit innings at just 76 pitches in what would be his biggest start of the season. With a 1-0 lead thanks to Austin Riley, Braves manager Brian Snicker was eager to go to his dominant bullpen, newly dubbed the Night Shift. Minter and Jackson would carry the no-hit bid into the eighth, where the Astros would collect their first hit of the game on a bloop single off Tyler Matzik. With the tying run on third, Matzik escaped yet another postseason jam, and Travis Darno gave Atlanta some insurance with a solo shot in the eighth. Will Smith would allow the first batter to reach in the ninth, but then would retire the side in order to preserve the 2-0 shutout victory, giving Atlanta the lead in the series. Game 4 would prove to be the best of the series so far. With the starting pitching running on fumes, heightened by the loss of Morton, Atlanta would turn to rookie Dylan Lee, who would make his first Major League start in the World Series. Lee would record just one out and give way to Kyle Wright with the bases loaded in the first, who got out of the jam after allowing just one run. Wright would come up huge for the Braves, going four and two thirds and allowing just one more run. Austin Riley would get the Braves on the board with an RBI single in the sixth, cutting Houston's lead to two to one. But it would be the bottom of Atlanta's lineup that would change the game. With one out in the seventh, Dansby Swanson hit a game-tying opposite field home run to make it two to two, but it would not stay that way for long. Pinch hitter Jorge Soler lined one over the left field wall, just over the glove of Jordan Alvarez, to give the Braves a 3-2 lead in the 7th. It was the first time in World Series history that the 8-9 and nine hitters had hit back-to-back -back home runs. There was still more drama to come, however, with Luke Jackson taking the mound in the 8th and retiring the first two batters before Jose Altuve sent a ball into left that Eddie Rosario miraculously made a backhanded catch on just in front of the wall. Will Smith would continue to be lights out in the 9th, and Atlanta took a commanding 3-1 series lead. The Braves were forced to throw another bullpen game in Game 5, but things were off to a great start against Framber Valdez whom Adam Duvall took deep for a grand slam in the first inning to quickly make it 4-0 Atlanta. It seemed like that could be the game, but the Astros' deep lineup quickly got two runs in the second against Tucker Davidson, and would tie the game in the third after Carlos Correa doubled and Yuli Gurriel grounded out. With the game tied in the third, Freddie Freeman launched a 460-foot home run to put the Braves back up 5-4, but the lights-out bullpen for Atlanta could not hold Houston, as a bases-loaded walk from A.J. Minter and a two-run single from Marwin Gonzalez made it 7-5 Houston. The Astros would score two more runs, and Kendall Graveman would throw a scoreless 8th and ninth inning to close out a season-saving win. The series would head back to Houston, with Atlanta leading it 3-2. Despite dropping Game 5, the Braves were still in a better position than the Astros, having Max Fried and Ian Anderson lined up for Games 6 and 7. Atlanta needed to win at least one of their bullpen games, and they had done just that. Now they needed a great start from Max Free to close out a title. Things did not start out smoothly in Game 6. After Jose Altuve reached on an infield single, Michael Brantley grounded a ball to first that Freeman could not feed cleanly to Freed, who ended up having his ankle stepped on by the runner. Freed would bounce back and strand both runners and collect two strikeouts to keep the game scoreless. Then came the moment for Jorge Soler. With two runners on in the third, Soler sent a ball into orbit for a mammoth three-run homer, giving Houston fans flashbacks to Albert Pujols' 2005 NLCS homer off of Brad Lidge. Atlanta had the momentum they needed, 
as Solaire's monster series continued. Free continued to dominate, and Dansby Swanson added two more to the Atlanta lead with a two-run homer in the fifth to make it 5-0, followed by Freeman's RBI double to make the lead six. The Braves could start to taste it, and Max Free completed six shutout innings with six strikeouts on just 74 pitches. Freeman would add on the finishing touches with a solo shot of his own in what could be his final game in an Atlanta uniform. The night shift took over as Tyler Matzik continued his absurd postseason with two more scoreless innings in the 7th and 8th. Will Smith took the mound in the 9th, and with a runner on in two outs, Yuli Gurriel grounded a ball to Georgia born Dansby Swanson, who thought about going to second, but once again threw over the face of the franchise, Freddie Freeman, for the final out. Against all odds, the Atlanta Braves were world champions in 2021, and for the first time since 1995. The Atlanta Braves were World Series champions, and if you were to look back at the day the season ended on July 10th, you would have seen a team far from that worthy of a title. But the Braves got hot at the right time. They rode a dominant bullpen and three key starters, and even after losing Charlie Morton, found a way to get contributions from young pitchers like Kyle Wright. This is a team that won without their best player and Ronald Acuna Jr. The players acquired at the trade deadline carried the team in October, from the huge Jocktober home runs from Jock Peterson, the NLCS MVP and Eddie Rosario, the postseason home runs from Adam Duvall, and to the World Series MVP heroics from Jorge Soler. GM Alex Anthopoulos proved something to the baseball world. Speaking of Anthopoulos, he was forced to watch the celebration from Atlanta after being quarantined with COVID. Despite not being able to celebrate with the team, he could certainly be proud of the product he built to bring home a title to Atlanta. The Braves overcame blowing a 3-1 lead in 2020. They overcame the Atlanta sports curse after the Falcons lost Super Bowl 51 after they blew a 28-3 lead in a game that ironically took place in Houston. And finally, Brian Snicker captured a championship after 45 years in baseball. The team that did not get over 500 until August 6th now stood on top of the baseball world. Thank you all for watching. I have a tremendous amount of respect for this Atlanta Braves team and their fans who truly deserve this moment after everything they went through over the past few years. I hope that I did this championship run justice and was able to show everyone why this team's story was truly special. Thank you all again. Feel free to let me know of any thoughts you might have surrounding the video, the team, or anything that you felt I missed or should have touched on more. Here's to baseball in 2022.